Hi, this is the Chronicles of Jacqueline, and um, I'm doing this as a prayer request unto the Lord. Um, I, I do make my personal prayer, but I also wanted to record this prayer because um, it's been heavy in my heart, um, so to speak, and uh, I don't. I, I think it requires continued prayer. Um, for me personally, I've gone through a period for a good several years, right around. 2010 even 2009 starting 2009 there was a lot of restlessness and lack of peace and I did pray for Muslims a lot and that um, the prayers that I did for Muslim people are not necessarily uh, getting answered and I think the Lord was allowing me to mature and but I think the Lord does hear my prayer because eventually he moved me into praying for Muslim people into praying for Jewish people. And now the Lord is making me pray to line up African American people, um, especially because quite a number of these African American people need to return and understand their history because a lot of African American is also tied in with the Israelites of the Bible. And um, this is not something I eagerly believed. Okay, this is something that I had to do a little research on. I didn't really buy it. However, there are um, there are evidences of tribes within Africa that are showing that they are Jewish people. And the Lembo tribe, the Igbo tribe, and also when they've done research on the skulls of these African American, it is matching with the Israelites back then because you gotta realize um, Jewish people do not uh, incinerate their, uh, the dead bodies they um, put them in the uh, they let it um, dry up for about a year in, in a tomb just like Jesus Christ and then the bones are placed inside an ossuary so uh, that can be studied and I think it's done for a purpose now I'm not saying that African American people are all Israelites and I'm also not saying that we should kick out people in Israel and replace them with the African American people. Because the peop these European people that have gone to um that have gone to different parts of Europe and are generally looking Russians and um Germans and Austrians and Polish or whatever, all of them many, many of them, six mil about six million Jewish people have died. And incinerated because of their faith. Now, granted, the form of Judaism is not completely biblical, and they do believe in the Talmud and everything. Uh, we have to understand that God has a strong forgiveness for the lost sheep. Okay, it's His children. It's just like if a if a parent loses their son, I mean, just think about how you feel if you lost your pet. It's just like you're restless, right? So, what more if you lost your your you have you you have a child, and you love this child, and they grew up and they grew up and away from you, and it's lost. I mean, how would you feel? Won't you be weary? So, the Lord has such great love, even though they could be lost, um, and. Um, now, one thing that really breaks my heart, and I had to keep doing this video, by the way, and I, I was asking, Lord, you know, help me, help me get it done. Let me hit home why I'm doing this video. And um, it's not because I just want to focus on all of these tele-evangelists and, and the Bethel Church and, and you know, regarding this book on the treasures of darkness. Um, I highly suggest people who are Jewish people or Christians to read this book because we need to know how to pray for ultra-orthodox people, Jewish people, and we have to also know how to pray for the African-American people. There is an order to enter the kingdom of God, okay? It's not, and there is, when you say something is holy, when you say divine, that is not just an easy access. This is not like a bank, it's not Chase Bank, and you go there, and oh, I want to get my money out, you know. Oh, here's my check, you know, like, here, I worked. Okay, God is not a bank. So, 
what I find is that um, many Christians and uh, perhaps even Jewish people, they think of God as some kind of a, you know, like a bank and a slot machine or something. And it, the this is not everybody, okay? But we do need to be very vigilant and aware that there's a lot of false prophets. Now, the good thing about the Bible is that God wanted people to know his heart. And repeatedly it shows stubborn people, rebellious people. Abraham started out very much, you know, like searching for God. He, he was doing whatever he could to please the Lord. But then his seeds have transgressed. Okay? And then Jesus came and fulfilled what's in the Old Testament, in the New Testament. And yet many missed him. They didn't. I think if the Jewish people had embraced Jesus Christ, we would all be in heaven now. There's no need to continue. There won't be 2016. But the Lord waited because He gave human beings the will, the will to follow Him and to transgress. But we, we have a lot of people who are rebellious, but yet the Lord is giving us a chance. So we, I cannot lose heart. I, I don't want to do what the enemy wanted me to do and uh, to condemn people, even if they had been um, uh, wolves in sheep clothing. I, I need to pray for a strong discernment upon the people, the sheep, and I am one of the sheep, except that this sheep is very much concerned. I, I, I live my life saying to myself, Lord, I don't want my soul to be misused. I do not want my soul to be gypped. I don't. I mean, people can steal my money. You can do whatever you want with me, but you can't steal my soul. And so I, I, I study. I try to know more and more and be able to figure it out. I mean, why is the Bible so critical these days? It's because there's human beings... We have grown so in love with ourselves. We have grown so in love with anything strange. And we there's a lot of rebellious spirits. So what happens is um, our world is succumbed to many of these things. But I think it I would be at a fault if I were to give up on people, um, even if they had been deemed as false prophets. We need repentance. That's the bottom line. And, you know, it's not because I don't, love the people within the Bethel Church. It's not because I don't love ultra-Orthodox people. I love Jewish people. I love Christian people. I love, um, you know, because I, I do my own search. But I also understand that not everybody will come to know the Lord at the same rate. And we have to be very forgiving of each other. And so I think it, um, perhaps the Lord just wanted me to ask for forgiveness. You know, to ask for forgiveness. And all of these I, it's just so sad because these seller evangelists they give enough of the truth and I follow them and I was impressed by them many times and now I'm learning no it's not matching the Bible anymore um, they can start out as like embracing but the next thing you know they start saying things like gods you know they don't just believe in God the father you know the God, the Father of the Universe, you know Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God, and now they're going into something else, a very new territory. And um, even this word of knowledge, how many times I've been told that? I mean, even this uh, slaying of the spirit, how many times I had, you know, I've gone to church and oh, it will be good for somebody to slay me in the spirit. And then when I researched it in the Bible, I haven't found one. <laughs> I. You know, there are the only time people were falling is, you know, like the glory of God makes people fall. But what is the point of this laying on the hand and then people having convulsions? I was trying to look at the this examples in the Bible and I couldn't find it. It's not. I mean, because I've read the Bible and I was I went on Google and I, 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 I don't know. I mean, so why have I gone there? I mean, why have my even my Christian aunt? Why didn't she not tell me about it? So. Deception has gone in among the Jews and the Christians, okay? So there's a lot of lost sheep. And you got to kind of have to be in fear for your soul, I think, as a Jew or a Christian. And I, I, don't, I don't 
believe anymore that we as a Christian should be accepting that we are sure that we are going to be in heaven. I think we're better off having fear. Fear of our salvation. Work for our salvation. Work, no, I'm not saying physically, but continue. Pine. Continually pine within the Bible. And um, every day, because the enemy will always steal something away. I, I, I no longer believe that once saved, always saved. I mean, it can't be. Not if, if, you, if, not if you turn into a false doctrine. Not if you started to teach false things. I, I, I don't know how you could say that you're guaranteed. So perhaps at the end, if the Lord says, okay, you're, you're given a chance to repent again, but you're not sure of that, you know? So I think what we need to do is continually plug in. And the only way to plug in is through the Scripture and through the Holy Spirit and fellowship with people who are not dwelling into Christianity for the sheer drama and for the sheer sensationalism. I think we so much wish as Christians that our church entertains us. We are so hooked on enter being entertained at church. I mean, I do not see Moses expecting God to entertain him. I mean, they are getting bread from heaven. And they are doing, um, they were laying down the tabernacle for the Lord. Okay, none of these things is of affluence. Yet we expect that, we, oh, if you believe God will give you the desires of your heart. Well, what if the desire of your heart is not really the will of God? Okay, if the desire of your heart is in the right course, I think God can give you that. If the desire of your heart is to heal people, God can grant those things. But if the desire of your heart is just to show off so that you look like a prophet now and you have hold a certain stature and more people are going to give you money, I don't think it's 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 anymore um, out of um, serving the Lord only. I think there's gratification. Financial gratification is the motivation of some of these um, prophets and teachers that we have. And yet, I think we still need to be able to forgive, discern, pray for discernment and wisdom. I no longer believe that we should assume God will, is always, you know, going to open heaven for us. I think we need to assume that the, if we want heaven to open, let us be mindful of our walk with God. Let us think about what else should we discard i mean what's what else I mean, we have sins you know uh we have to be forgiving of ourselves we have to you know ask god for forgiveness but at the same time ultimately we should always be searching the the scripture really questioning are we falling into this false prophets i mean are are our leaders falling into false prophets um are we prophesying to people at to, to 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 get benefit for ourselves or are we trying to reach out to them why couldn't it just be bring them back to the Bible so um, this is really what's breaking my heart and um, I, I looked at all these church and so many times I don't understand it, it's like oh you you ask for God and you know God has to fulfill that I mean sometimes I, we just need to pray for peace um, why is and I realize now that the number one reason that people lose peace is because we dwell into sorcery, and the more people dwell into sorcery, the more you have confusion as Jew and as Christians. We fall for sorcery, and we just have to admit it that we are rebellious. And so we have to keep reading the Bible and we have to keep plugging in and we, we have to watch where our feet are going. And um, yeah, I, I just know as we have to pray for forgiveness. We have to be able to forgive this false prophets and, false prophets and move away from their teaching. Because now that you know, like he says, it can't keep falling for it. It looks beautiful. It's like a candy. And that's the thing, like... Um, so anyway, I will continue 
And um, like I said, um, it may seem depressing, but honestly, I think we need to strive to know more the Word of God before we assume that we are saved or that the Lord is going to take us to heaven. Because nothing in this Bible is just a complete assurance unless we are plugged into it. Because the enemy is always trying to steal people and steal their soul. So we have to be vigilant and pray for one another and forgive one another and even forgive these false prophets and move away from what they're teaching because you don't want to keep, you know, you don't want to be hypnotized in it. But at the same time, pray for their forgiveness. Ask the Lord for wisdom and discernment. So that's where I'm going to end it here. And I will continue.